Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For peace from high, for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For peace and whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy church and for all who enter with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our Holy Father Francis Papa Roma, let us pray to the Lord. For our most reverend Metropolitan William, for our God loving Bishop Milan, for the venerable presbyter, the diacon in Christ, and all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For our government and for all in the service of our country, let us pray to the Lord. For this city, for every city, community, and for the faithful living in them, let us pray to the Lord. For a favorable weather, for the months of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel by sea, air, and land, for the sick, the suffer, and the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. That we be delivered from all affliction, rest, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Protect us, save us, and mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Commemorate the most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and the Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us come our souls and one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. O Lord our God, mighty beyond description, glorious of understanding, merciful without limits, loving us all beyond expression, look with compassion on us and this holy church of Master, and show us and those who pray with us riches your tender mercy. For to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is your glory, honor, worship, now and ever, and forever.
ಮಾಭ್ಯತಂತೆ For you are holy of God and we give glory to you Father Son and Holy Spirit now and ever and forever Let us be attentive, peace be to all, wisdom be attentive. God is 
may note in Judah, in Israel, his name is great. Wisdom. A reading from the book of Hebrews. Let us be attentive. Brethren, by faith the saints conquered kingdoms, did what was just, obtained the promises. They broke the jaws of lions put out raging fires, escape the devouring sword. Though weak, they were made powerful, became strong in battle, and turned back foreign invaders. Women received back their dead through resurrection. Others were tortured and would not receive deliverance in order to obtain a better resurrection. Still, others endured mockery, scourging, even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, sawed in two, put to death at sword's point. They went about garbed in the skins of sheep or goats, needy, afflicted, tormented. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered about in deserts and on mountains. They dwelt in caves and in holes of the earth. Yet, despite the fact that all of these were approved because of their faith, they did not obtain what had been promised. God had made a better plan, a plan which included us. Without us, they were not to be made perfect. Therefore, since we for our part are surrounded by this cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every encumbrance of sin which clings to us and persevere in running the race which lies ahead. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, who inspires and perfects our faith. Peace be to your reader, wisdom be attentive. Let us stand and listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Let us be attentive. The Lord said to his disciples, Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. Whoever disowns me before men, I will disown before my Father in heaven. 
Whoever loses father or mother, son or daughter more than me, he is not worthy of me. He who will not take up his cross and come after me is not worthy of me. Then Peter said to him, Here we have put everything aside to follow you. What can we expect from it? Jesus said to them, I give you my solemn word. In the new age, when the Son of Man takes his seat upon a throne befitting his glory, you who have followed me shall likewise take your place, places on twelve thrones to judge the twelve tribes of Israel. Moreover, everyone who has given up home, brothers or sisters, father or mother, wife or children or property for my sake, will receive many times as much and inherit everlasting life. Many who are first shall come last, and the last shall come first. Glory to Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate not only Sunday, but if there is a feast today, and the feast is the feast of all saints. It is natural, last week we celebrated Pentecost, descending of the Holy Spirit, and today the feast is celebration of the fruit of activity of Holy Spirit in human souls. And this activity leads people to holiness. In the past, this feast was celebrated really with, with some kind of intensity. Especially in Rome, this feast was very important and uh, because there were so many churches with relics of saints, so many people made pilgrimage to Rome and because they wanted to somehow venerate these relics and this feast of all saints. And those pilgrims were so many that church was forced to change the date of, of that feast. Because on this Sunday after Pentecost were coming so many pilgrims to Rome that Rome didn't have enough food to somehow feed pilgrims. It was beginning of summer season. There was no new harvest yet, so they moved it in Latin church to November the 1st. But this is just detail. What is more important is for us to not only to acknowledge this feast, but to take these challenges which are, from, we are, which are coming from this feast. The first challenge is, or leads us, to really somehow realize the presence of these saints who are in heaven and who are our friends. Probably you notice that in the end of the liturgy, of each liturgy in Eastern Rite, in the end, in this dismissal prayer, we are asking God for grace, for salvation, through prayers of Theotokos, St. John Chrysostom. Uh, Patron of us perish and through the prayers of all saints. In the end of each worship, we ask them to pray for us, to, to help us in growth. And we pray that 
we are praying this all time and it's so natural for us but this feast gives us this challenge take it not as a habit do it with this intention really realize that when we say this when we pray this that whole heaven is coming and we are or we are giving like order to all saints to pray for us and they do this but we have to do it with intention and then if it will bring like more spiritual benefit for us this is the first challenge to renew this attention to this message to this reality the second message is more tough or challenge it is a reminder this feast is a reminder that this is our goal God our Lord Jesus Christ gave us order in gospel its commandment from gospel be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect he means he orders us be holy not a little bit be super holy be so holy as you can be this is goal of life this is like this for what we were created and we have to take his words in a uh, with seriousness serious like attention because this is will of our God he wishes us to be perfect and holy and we have to rethink that because many times we are afflicted by some kind of common understanding or or maybe from bad formation which led us only to make this kind of to effort just to go just to go over you know, to avoid hell and to go to salvation to go to heaven Many times we say, well, there's a piece of humility there, but still, we say, many say that, well, I will be just satisfied and happy if God will allow me to sweep floors in the basement of his kingdom. It will be enough for me. In this way, we acknowledge that while we are fighting with sin, with inclinations of our towards evil but but still this should not be our goal just to get there through this fence somehow and to be satisfied this is not what God wants us to do and if you have this kind of thinking it is something what doesn't please God because it means oh Lord I don't want you to love so much that through this love I would become very holy. I just want you to love a little bit, just which allows me to be with you even in this basement of kingdom. So this is challenging because this feast gives us a correct perspective of life that we are, to, we are called to holiness and perfectness. And in not some small measure, to the biggest measure, we are able to receive you through God's grace. And we should strive for that. Because heaven is not just, you know, one state. Holy Fathers, they teach us something different. They say that or they are using Christ's words that there are many mansions in heaven, in, in, in the house or in kingdom. And Holy Father, they explain that, that, well, souls in heaven, they experience different levels of blessedness. Even they are satisfied 
fully on each level, still there are souls which experience it more intensive or less intensive. And it depends on the level of purification of soul during this earthly life. More we are purify our soul and heart, more we are able to see and understand God. And in heaven, it, it is transformed to this level of blessedness which depends on on this ability of, of on this level of purity of our heart. Saint Isaac the Syrian he explains this situation in heaven in this way. He compares God to sun. The sun, light of sun, is always the same. But we can experience this light of sun in different ways. For example, now we are in this building, this church. As through windows comes light of sun. So we experience this light. We can read in this light. We can recognize things around us in this light. And we are satisfied with this light. But we can go outside and to be somewhere in shadow. We still will be able to experience this light of sun. We'll be seeing things with bigger clarity. But still it will be not that experience which have those who are exposed directly to sun, to its warmth and light when everything is, they can see in clarity and experience this power. The same thing is in heaven. God is this light, which is perfect and without change. But we will experience this light in different levels. And these levels depends on where we are in this state of purification of soul and mind. And this is why we should have this desire to work hard on our souls, to make effort now while we are living this short life, to gain this knowledge of God, to gain this purity of heart, maybe we can see God as clearly as possible, because, and this will bring us to the higher level of blessedness in heaven. The saints, they understood that, because when they went through this purification of soul and body, and they received Holy Spirit and received God's grace, they had this foretaste of this blessedness. And there were, they enjoyed it so much, they were taken with this experience so much that they multiplied their efforts to really love God even more. And then they had different experience, which was more intensive than the previous one. They, they experience this, this growing grace, this experience of this intensity of, of, of this foretaste of blessed life. They understood these words of Christ in a concrete way. And this is why they urge us to not to be ignorant. They urge us that well, trust us. They know that if we are on this journey of purification, we have to depend on our faith because this experience is still missing in us. But they say, don't be scared. Don't give up. Follow what Christ is telling us and you will get this experience.
we are invited to be holy. And if we don't keep this desire for holiness burning in our hearts, if we don't do this, it means that we don't really love God. Because it means that we don't want to enter deeper and deeper to life with Him to be, to, and to be united with Him. Yes. This is a big challenge. But we are not alone in this battle, in this effort. At first, we have to realize one thing, and I would say several like this, spiritual laws. When we make decision, serious decision, yes, I want to reach holiness. Through this decision, I am activating God's grace, which is helping us. I am not alone. And with each step I make, with each sacrifice I, I, I make or endure during, in the way of you know, this purification of my life, additional grace is coming. When I make this decision and I try to make steps, even the little ones, I have to be aware that I am becoming one of this crowd of saints who went through this process too and they understand difficulties I have with this spiritual effort. And there are coming with their help, with their help to us. And we have this experience. A few days ago, maybe a week ago, I talked to one person and this person told me about experience. He said, I, I felt like stuck in my spiritual life. Everything was so dark, I didn't know what to do. It was painful. I was asking God, help me, help me. And he said, you know, and then I opened Facebook. Strange thing. But he had, that person has very good friends on Facebook. I said, one of our friends shared a picture with words of one saint. One sentence from this saint. And when I read this, I knew this is exactly for me. And in these words, in this advice, was solution for my problems. I said, it was like that. This darkness disappeared from my heart and new fire came, new courage came. He said, this is amazing. It's not amazing. This is normal thing. Because if we want to grow in holiness, if we want to become holy, whole heaven is coming to us, to help us, to guide us, to encourage us, to make us But we want, we need just to start. So be assured about this help from above. And be assured that once you make decision, really, do everything for salvation of soul and for receiving holiness, be sure that you will start you will start to experience this wonderful help from above amen
Let us all say with our soul, with our mind, let us say. <coughs> Almighty God of our fathers, we pray you here and have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray you here and have mercy. Uh, and we pray for Holy Father Francis Poporam and for Most Reverend Metropolitan William for God loving Bishop Milan, for those who serve and have served this Holy Church, for our spiritual fathers and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, we pray for our government and for all in the service of our country. Again, we pray for the people who present who you great upon mercy for those who show us mercy and follow Christians of the true faith. For you are merciful, loving God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. May the Lord God remember his kingdom, our Holy Father, Francis Poporom, our most reverend Metropolitan William, our God, loving Bishop Milan, the entire priest of the Eclum Monastic Order, our government, and all in the service of our country, and the memorable founders and benefactors of this Holy Church. May the Lord God remember all you Christians of the true faith, always, now and ever, and forever.
For the precious gifts placed before us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and grant His true mercy, the only begotten Son, be we are blessed together with your all holy good and life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Peace be to all. Let us love one another, that with one mind we may profess. The doors, the doors and wisdom, let us be attentive. Let us stand right, let us stand in all, let us be attentive to all for the Holy Name, for I am peace. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God and Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you.
Let us lift up our hearts. Oh, let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and just to sing to the bless you, to praise you, to thank you, to worship and replace your dominion for your God, ineffable, inconceivable, invisible, incomprehensible, ever existed ever the same, you and your only begotten Son, your Holy Spirit. You brought us out of non-existence into being again, raised us up when we had fallen, left nothing undone, until you brought us to heaven and gave us your kingdom to come. For all this we thank you, only begotten Son and Holy Spirit, for all that we know and that we do not know, for the manifest and benefits bestowed on us. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands, even though there stand before you thousands of archangels, tens of thousands of angels, cherubim and seraphim, six wings, many eyes, throwing up down their wings. Singing, shouting, crying aloud, and saying the triumphal hymn. We also cry out these, these blessed powers, loving kind master, and say, Holy are you, all holy you, and your only begotten Son, and your Holy Spirit. Holy are you, and all holy, magnificent is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. He came and fulfilled the whole divine plan in our behalf. On the night he was betrayed, or rather when he surrendered himself for the life of the world, he to bread into his holy, and all pure and make close hands, give thanks and blessed, sanctify broken, gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. Likewise, he took the chalice after supper, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Remember, therefore, the same command, and all has come to pass in our behalf, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and the third day, the ascension into heaven, the sin at your right hand at the second coming glory. Offering you your own from your own, always and everywhere. Moreover, we offer to you this spiritual and unbloody sacrifice and implore, pray, and treat you. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us, upon these gifts lying before us, and make this bread the precious body of Christ, and that which is in this chalice the precious body of Christ, changing them by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, those who partake of them, they bring about the spirit of vigilance, the remission of sins, the communion of the Holy Spirit, 
the fullness of the heavenly kingdom and confidence in a judgment or a condemnation. Moreover, we offer this spiritual sacrifice for those departing faith. The forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and for each spirit brought to perfection in faith. In especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and the Virgin Mary. Among the first, O Lord, with my Holy Father, Francis Popo, Romer, most reverend, metropolitan, William Ragad, Lamy, Bishop Milan, preserve them for your holy churches in peace, safety, honor, health for many years as they faithfully impart the word of your truth. And grant that with one voice, one heart, we may glorify and praise and most honor the magnificent name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and forever. May the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. Now that we have commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the precious gifts of the consecrated God who loves us all, may receive this holy heavenly mystical, Teresa Roma, spiritual fragrance, and send down upon us in return His divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Asking for unity in the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. And make us worthy, O Master, that we may with confidence and without condemnation, there call you Father, God of heaven, and say.
O thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. <coughs> Peace be to all. Bow your heads to the Lord. Through the grace, the mercy, and loving kindness, only begotten Son, with me are blessed together with your all holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us be attentive. Holy gifts to holy people. Approach with fear of God and with faith.
Save your people, O God, and bless your inheritance. Blessed our God, always, now and ever, and forever. Arise, now that we have received the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly, life, clean, all some mysteries of Christ, let us worthily thank the Lord. For you are our sanctification, we give glory to you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us go forth in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, blessing those who bless you and sanctifying those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Preserve the fullness of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them. Return by your divine power and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your church, to the priest, to our government, and to all your people for all generous given our perfect gift. This one bow. Coming down from the Father who lights and we give glory, thanksgiving, worship to you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Blessing of the Lord be upon you through His grace, loving kindness, always, now and ever, and forever. And glory to you, O Christ God, our hope. Glory to you.
May Christ our true God, risen from the dead, have mercy on us and save us. Through the prayers of his most pure mother, of the holy, glorious, illustrious apostles, of our holy father, gentle, so much bishop Constantinople, of the holy father, Nicholas the patron of this church, and through the prayers of all the saints, for Christ is good and loves us all. Glory to Jesus Christ. Thank you for beautiful liturgy. Thank you came to pray.